It's strange that one of the most influential comic strips in history is actually somewhat obscure in the grand scheme of things. Yet artists like Bill Waterston, Jeff Smith, Albert Odezzo, René Goscinny, and Gary Trudeau were heavily inspired by it, as evidenced by their work. That is Walt Kelly's Pogo, a comic that on the surface seems fairly simple in telling of a group of animals living in a swamp, but had a lot of layers and social political commentary within the panels. The first thing that leaps out is the use of language. The characters talk in a sort of swamp speak, which adds a real flavor to the strips. It takes a while to get used to it, but eventually the dialogue takes a lyrical turn, and Kelly gives the strip a certain unique flavor. Another thing that stands out is the fast-paced storylines and multiple plot lines. Kelly will go from one plot to another in surprising succession, enough that you want to go back and reread the pages. It's definitely a comic that rewards multiple visits. For example, there's one story arc where Howland Owl gets glued to Albert Alligator, frees himself by being launched into the air, lands headfirst into a teapot, is confused for Martian, is set free again, gets confused with a roast chicken who gets eaten by Albert, then Pogo and Churchill Turtle decide to fly to Mars and end up in a chicken coop by mistake. Phew! Yet impressively, Kelly is able to fit all that plot while still keeping it coherent. The characters that populated Okefenokee Swamp tended to be almost self-serving, as they did things mostly for their own gain. Yet Kelly was mainly speaking about human nature, as most of the characters are likable despite their severe flaws. Pogo is pretty much the straight man of the group, though even he has his problems. In the meantime, you have Albert, who is not too bright, Hal and Al, thinking he was smarter than everybody else, the sometimes scheming Churchill the Turtle, and the cynical Porky Pine, who is almost always the butt monkey of the swamp, and despite his close friendship with Pogo, almost always felt by himself. The most villainous character is Deacon Mushrat, who tried to make the swamp critters more modern and disciplined. Throughout the run of Pogo, Walt Kelly made no secret about the political commentary and continued to insert the satire into the comics, despite the threat of newspapers pulling them. However, he was also open about being an equal opportunity satirist and mocked both sides of the political platform. He was even brave enough to insert an obvious character of Joseph McCarthy at the height of the communist witch hunt. Even when Kelly was forced to put a bag over his head, he was not subtle about it. Same with later depictions of Fidel Castro and Nikita Khrushchev. Kelly seemed particularly critical of the hive mind mentality of the populace. The battle with the newspapers is a fascinating story in its own right. When they refused to publish a comic strip because of its political content, Kelly gave them an alternate strip to run with cute bunnies populating the panels, which his readers knew meant he was censored from publishing the original strip. Why isn't there a biopic about Walt Kelly's life story yet? Surprisingly, there was not a lot of media produced based on Pogo, although there were certainly merchandise and even songs based on the comics. Being a former Disney animator, Kelly was actually somewhat resistant about licensing his characters to animation producers. However, he made one notable exception in his career. In 1969, Walt Kelly wrote the script for an animated television special called the Pogo Special Birthday Special, eventually directed by Chuck Jones. However, Kelly was not particularly pleased with the special, as he thought Jones put too much of his own signature into it, and altered the characters in ways he wasn't pleased with. While not a bad special per se, I do think it's a tad lacking and is not that memorable. While the comics were fast-paced, Jones took a more leisurely approach with this special, and that affects the comedy a little bit. To its credit, the animation is very good, and the voices are well chosen, but I agree with Kelly that there's a lot more Jones in this special than him. While most of the characters look like their comic originals, Mamzelle Hebsba is very much from Jones' pen here, and it's kind of weird hearing June Foray talk to herself. Oh, you no wish me to reject these little porcupines, no? Because he is think he in love of me, Miss Pa. Yeah, I guess that's pretty dagbone see Pa all right, Miss Mamsell. Yes, very well. All this I comprehend and will be kind. Why do I get the feeling she was the inspiration for Minerva Mink on Animaniacs? 
There are some cute moments, but Jones piles on the sentiment more than Kelly ever did, and some of the hard edge of the comic isn't as evident here. As a standalone special, it's okay, but when compared to the comics, it definitely falls a bit short and is kind of forgettable. But it's worth a curiosity peek, at least. After Walt Kelly passed away in 1973, not before taking some swipes at the likes of Richard Nixon and his administration, the comic continued for a short number of years before finishing its run. However, there were a couple more attempts at continuing the adventures of Pogo. In 1980, a stop-motion animated feature was released titled I Go Pogo, which adapted one of the storylines in which everyone wants Pogo to run for president despite his complete disinterest. Inspired by an actual Democratic presidential candidate, the film actually managed to keep a lot of Kelly's original political commentary intact, as we see the Deacon and Mole working behind the scenes to sway the election in their favor. The film also kept a lot of the fast pace of the comics, with some very funny set pieces, particularly one sequence involving a carnival. A lot of the characters' personalities are kept intact, and they're adapted quite well to stop-motion animation. Even the couple of original songs written for the movie are pretty decent. Despite the short 85-minute running time, it does get a little long-winded, especially when a new villain is suddenly added to the mix at the very end. The only version that is distributed of this rare film is a later HBO cut that added narration. Nonetheless, if you can track this little gem down, it's definitely worth a look. In the late 80s, there was also an attempt to revive the Pogo comics, but it was short-lived. Now he is a surprisingly obscure character, but who knows, maybe he can make a comeback. With Blue Sky's Fantastic Peanuts movie and Sony working on a Smurfs movie that's closer to the original comics, we seem to be seeing a Hollywood willing to do more faithful adaptations of classic comics. Maybe Pogo could be on the way. For now, Walt Kelly's classic stories are absolutely worth digging into, and it's not hard to see why it was so influential to many artists. See you next time.